When colleagues or clients approach me and say, we want to stand up a DEI program, how do we do that? The first question I ask them is, what's the culture of your company? And if you're really um, focused on shifting that culture, you have to be intentional, yet sensitive to what it is you want to do within that framework. Joining me today is Nikki Lewis-Simon, Senior Vice President, Shareholder, and Chief DEI Officer with Greenberg Traurig. Nikki, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, to what extent, if any, has the recent Supreme Court case involving Harvard's DEI policies changed the way in which you've seen companies approach their DEI initiatives? Well, I think, um, Matt, overall, I think companies have been very focused on DEI even before the uh, decision in Students for Fair Admissions. And I think even after that decision, companies remain focused in this area. Obviously, we've had um, you know, dozens of lawsuits and some challenges that have come out in terms of folks using that decision to try to um, eliminate workplace DEI efforts. So we definitely have lawsuits on the one hand that focus in that space. I think on the other side, we've had very um, successful efforts uh, for workplaces who are committed to DEI, and I think that remains a priority. I don't think that will change for most of our, you know, Fortune 1000 companies because they recognize the value of full inclusion. And I think they recognize that um, developing a sense of belonging helps to drive innovation, safety, and sharing different perspectives and other innovations. And what are some of the best practices that you've developed as the chief DEI officer for one of the country's largest law firms? So what I would say our best practices probably fall in about five buckets. And I think those buckets hopefully are helpful for other companies, and I believe that's what we're focused on as well. One is establishing a DEI team, sort of an advisory council or some leadership around this topic so that you can operationalize DEI. It shouldn't be siloed uh, off to the side with one person being responsible. It's really a corporate responsibility of each and every person within the company. So that's number one. Number two, that whatever you're doing in this space, it must align with the culture. So when colleagues or clients approach me and say, we want to stand up a DEI program, how do we do that? The first question I ask them is, what's the culture of your company? And if you're really um, focused on shifting that culture, you have to be intentional, yet sensitive to what it is you want to do within that framework. Three, you have to leverage leadership buy-in. It absolutely comes from the top. And in order to really um, have it permeate the organization, you have to leverage that energy. So that's number three. Number four, you have to communicate what, what you're doing, right? So we communicate internally and we communicate externally. But the folks that are responsible for driving your revenue have to know, you know, what is it that we're focused on in DEI? And then um, number five is really navigating the frozen middle. And if I have to say, if there's any area of um, great opportunity, it's that space. So when you have colleagues that are responsible, for example, for making the widgets, their metrics are driven by how many widgets they make. It's very difficult for those leaders to also focus on DEI. So working to support them in not only making the widgets, but prioritizing DEI is critically important. And finally, how has your DEI experience benefited you as you provide legal advice to your clients? So it's benefited me and our clients in so many different ways. I mean, we're really focused on supporting clients based on their corporate culture, their budget, their risk tolerance, and other uh, parameters to ensure that they can sustain their DEI efforts. Um, when companies decide to go public and they want to stand up a program, we're able to support that. My experience in DEI, I think, assists clients in ensuring that it resonates with the culprit, uh, with their employees um, and with their leaders. And so I think that's really the key. Um, I've been with my firm for 22 years and, and I came over as a third year lawyer. And so really having grown up in, in the uh, law firm has also assisted me in understanding the ups and downs and ebbs and flow. And so I think that also benefits our clients because I'm coming at it from a very realistic perspective. 